Cafe Hun is a restaurant located in Hampton, Maryland, and the focus of Season 4, Episode 15 of Kitchen Nightmares, a show where Gordon Ramsay tries to keep failing restaurants from going out of business. I'm going to find out if the restaurant managed to survive after going on the show, and what the owner has been up to since then. At the beginning of the episode, it's explained that the owner of the restaurant, Denise, has not done herself any favors as far as becoming popular with the locals. Apparently, she copyrighted the word Hun, which is a common term used in Baltimore, and she even sent out cease and desist letters to the local government and other business owners selling knickknacks to try and stop them from using it. The locals were understandably pissed off and Denise got a ton of negative media coverage because of it. When Gordon shows up for the restaurant, he meets the employees and Denise and the two sit down to have a one-on-one -on -one chat. Denise almost immediately starts crying and talks about how the locals and the media are attacking her for copywriting the word hun, but she conveniently leaves out any mention of her sending out cease and desist letters and threatening to sue people. And Gordon says, did you not sue anyone? And she responds, I never sued anybody. And he says, you didn't sue anybody. Did you threaten to sue anybody? And she responds, no. And he says, I've done my homework before I got here. And she makes this face and does the old, oh yeah, now I remember. I might have sent out one or two little cease and desist letters. Gordon essentially tells her that if she doesn't start being honest, then he can't help her at all. Next, Gordon tries the food, and surprisingly, he likes the crab that's a part of a sandwich that he ordered, but doesn't like anything else. But hey, one out of like four is better than most restaurants on the show, I guess. Denise is annoyed at all of Gordon's criticisms about the food and says, every time he had a comment or a criticism, it's pretty ridiculous. I've been here for 20 years. I had to have done something, right? Maybe he's not the answer. Next, Gordon watches a very chaotic dinner service, and as complaints about the food start flooding the kitchen, Denise starts 86ing damn near everything. After that, the employees all meet together to tell Denise that she's an overbearing bitch, and she cries, apologizes, and tells her staff that she values them all. But notably, some of her employees remain unconvinced that she will actually change long term. Next, as usual, Gordon revamps the menu and the interior. The redesign is kind of tacky, but it was tacky before, and I guess that's kind of what they're going for. And finally, he decides to try and help improve Cafe Hun's public relations. He gets Denise onto a local radio station so she can try to make amends. On the air, she says, I just want to say, trademarking the word has not only almost killed me, but has just about killed the business. I didn't understand the whole culture and how passionate everybody was about, you know, Hun is in our hearts, and now I get it. I was just doing what business people do, and it was a misstep. I am so sorry for the animosity and the hatred and everything that trademarking a word, just a word, has done. Please forgive me. And she also agrees to give back the trademark for the word Hun in order to help make amends. Maybe I'm being too harsh here, but to me, it still kind of sounds like she She's making herself the victim in her apology. She apologized for other people's animosity instead of apologizing for trying to monopolize and make money off of a part of Baltimore's culture, and she said that trademarking a word, just a word, has done. She reiterates that it's just a word, which seems like she's trying to drive home the point that it's not a big deal and critics are overreacting. But I don't know, let me know if you think Denise really is sincere here and I'm being too pessimistic. But that's how the episode ends, with the restaurant seeming to be on the track to success. So, did the restaurant stay open long after being on the show and are they still open today? Well, the first thing I found is that Kitchen Nightmares actually did a revisited episode about them in 2012 and based on that, the restaurant was doing really well. Gordon also went to the local radio station again, and according to the show hosts, while some people still refused to forgive Denise, many others did. The hosts also said that they ate at the restaurant recently, and that the food was good, and he also confirmed that Denise definitely did give up the copyright for the word hun. In the revisited episode, Denise seemed way more genuine to me for some reason. She says that she is very thankful for the second chance she was given, and also says that since going on the show, she's gotten more involved with the community and is thankful to them as well. I'm noticing a trend where restaurant owners behave like complete assholes in the original episode and then in the revisited episode they're just totally normal people. I also found this news clip about Denise and Cafe Hun and the infamous big pink flamingo that adorns the front of the building. It's basically about how Denise had to temporarily take the flamingo down over some licensing issue. Well Donna, you know the pink flamingo over Cafe Hun has become a Baltimore icon in just the seven years it's been up, but now all of a sudden the city says it needs a permit. This clip is from 2009, which is before Kitchen Nightmares and before her horrible decision to trademark the word Hun, but I think it's interesting because it made me realize that before the controversy, a lot 
lot of people really liked Hefei Hun and it was kind of a landmark in Hampton. But how is the restaurant doing in 2022? Well, surprisingly, it did stay open until 2022. But by some coincidence, just this past few months in April, Denise announced that she would be retiring and closing down Cafe Hun. All right, it has been a staple in the Hamden community for more than 30 yeah. years. But tonight, Cafe Hun will serve its last mm -hmm. dinners. Owner Denise Whitey. She also said that she'll be leasing the space to Foreman Wolf Restaurant Group. But as far as I can tell, they're going to replace Cafe Hun with something else and not keep the same restaurant running under different ownership. I also found out that for many years, Denise has been hosting a local event called Hun Fest, which apparently she will continue hosting despite the restaurant closing. Put on a feather boa, tease your hair into a beehive. Happening in Baltimore is the annual Han Fest. Joining us live this morning is Denise Whiting. Good morning, Denise. How are you? After watching the episode and doing all the research for this video, I don't think Denise is a terrible person. I think that she may have gotten a little greedy as far as copywriting the word Hun, and maybe didn't realize that there would be so many people that were mad about it. But there do seem to be a lot of local people who really like Denise and Cafe Hun, and I don't think that would be the case if she was as bad as she came across in the Kitchen Nightmares episode. And I think that her restaurant probably wouldn't have survived this long through all that it did if she didn't have people supporting her. But the last thing I want to take a look at is some reviews of the food from normal people. The food must have at least been decent if she managed to stay open, right? I found the restaurant's Yelp page and their ratings aren't great. They have two and a half stars out of five and we can see the spread of reviews right here. It's mostly one stars. Yikes. But, at least in my experience, usually when I see that many one star reviews, there's a good chance that a lot of them are people who are just giving it one star because of some other reason and not because the food is actually bad. I mean, even Gordon, while he did have complaints about some of the food, he didn't say it was abysmal or anything. I decided to read through some of the reviews to see if I could get a feel for how genuine the criticism is. After reading several good reviews and several bad reviews, I can't really say one way or the other if the bad ones are just people trolling. Sometimes you can kind of tell a review is fake by how ridiculous it is, but a lot of the things mentioned in the bad reviews are also mentioned in the four and five star reviews. The main complaints that the restaurant has are slow service, high prices, mediocre food, and the waiters and waitresses being too casual, I guess. Because I'm a dork, I decided to graph the one star reviews over time and see if it correlated with the controversy at all. Based on this article, the news first reported Denise's copyright scandal in December of 2010, specifically the 10th of December, which would be right here on my graph. Out of all the reviews in December 2010, only one of them was written before December 10th, and out of all 115 one-star reviews, only four of them were written before the news of the copyright broke. But I should also mention that there were several three and two-star reviews written before the news as well. My theory is that the restaurant probably had some issues with their food and service, and the negative attention brought about by Denise's copyright claim probably made people way less sympathetic to those problems, and led more people to write one-star reviews instead of maybe a two or three star review. I assume that the restaurant survived because the food was just okay enough for most people to keep coming and its location probably also played a role. Anyways, it doesn't sound like it was amazing in any regard, at least based on what I read. But that is the story of Cafe Hun. I tried to do something a little bit different in this video. I made the recap section of the video much shorter because I've gotten some requests from people to do that and I decided to give it a try. Let me know if you like the video that way better or if you don't like it then please let me know as well. Anyways, I guess that's all for this video. If you liked the video, please consider liking and subscribing. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end, and hopefully I will see you next time.